everyone, and welcome to a brand new Chill Survival series. In this video, we're going to peacefully explore a brand new world, we're going to gather up resources, and then we're going to build a starter home together. I'm so excited for this adventure to begin, so let's just get right into it. So it looks like our adventure begins in a peaceful flower forest. And with every new Minecraft adventure, the first thing that we need to do is punch a tree to gather some wood. Now that we have our wood, let's make a crafting table. I'm also going to mark our spawn with two oak planks, just so we remember where we spawned into this world. Alright, so let's place our crafting table down and let's begin things by making some sticks. And with the sticks we just made, I'm going to make a wooden pickaxe and also an axe. Those tools should be good to start with because I want to upgrade to stone as soon as I can. Now that we have the essentials, let's explore the area around us to see what else is around here. I honestly love the flower forest biome so much, so I'm actually quite keen to build up a house over here. However, we are going to have to do a lot more exploring for some essential materials. And by essential materials, I think you all know I mean spruce wood. I find that it's kind of a building block that goes well with everything, so it's really foundational. <gasps> I think I see some sheep off in the distance. That's perfect because we are playing in normal survival, so sleeping through the night to avoid mobs would be nice. And I also just spotted some cows in the distance over there, which means we have another good source of food as well. Look at all the sheep, we have so many! This is such a great start. Whoa, look at that rocky cliffside over there. I think we should go check that out quickly. We are going to need to collect some wool and food in a bit, but we still have lots of daylight left, so let's explore this rocky cliffside first. Whoa. This is pretty cool. Oh, this looks to be like a pretty big cave. And I see you down there, buddy. I see you creeping. Oh, we've got some iron right there. Let's just begin by grabbing some of the materials we need on the surface here. I don't think we're quite ready to go into that cave yet. So I'm just grabbing some of this stone first so we can upgrade our tools. That way they'll be way more efficient. That should be enough stone to start, so let's grab some of this coal for furnace fuel and also so we can make some torches. Alright, let's place our crafting table down, and now we can make ourselves some stone tools. And lastly, let's make a furnace so we can smelt the iron that we're gonna grab. Perfect. Yeah, these tools are a big improvement. It feels way more efficient. Alright, let's just pillar up quickly to grab this iron. Now we got four pieces of iron, and it probably would be beneficial for me to make a pickaxe with the little that I have, but I think I'm going to make shears to gather wool. I don't want to hurt any of our sheep friends yet, especially if we're going to be making a farm area in the future. We'll definitely need the iron tool soon, but we'll worry about that later. For now, we just need to focus on a place to sleep tonight. Oh, where is that coming from? Oh, hello, friend. Bye-bye. <laughs> While that iron's smelting, I'm just going to gather a little bit more of this coal. All right, we have two iron smelted, which means we can now make our shears. Priorities, am I right? We'll get more iron later. All right, it looks to me like it's late afternoon, so let's gather our workstation and head towards the sheep so we can get our bed ready. Well, maybe not right away. I kind of got distracted by this coal. Okay, that was a little bit more than I was expecting, but that's kind of how it is with these coal veins. There's always way more than you realize. Alright, I think we're good on coal for a while. We'll leave the rest for now and let's head over to our sheep. Ugh! Hey, what you doing over here, buddy? I'm barely prepared to deal with you, so get out of here. I do see some more iron, but there's also a ton of creepers around, so maybe it's not the best idea to go wandering into this cave just yet. We'll leave that for another day. In the meantime, let's take the safe route up here and head back over to the sheep. At least we know that this cave is close by, and we probably have tons of resources that we can gather down there. And the best part about being in a flower forest is, well, we have tons of flowers, which means we can pluck a couple of these, we can make some dye, and now we'll be able to make ourselves a cute orange bed to sleep in for the night. Alright, sheep friends, I'm back, and I record Require your wool, please. So let's get one of our most important Minecraft items out now, the bed. Except we got kind of unlucky there and we only got two wool from those sheep. I thought I saw another one hanging around here somewhere. 
There you are. Just gonna give you a quick little trim. And now we have more than enough. Perfect. And let's make our very first bed in this world. And of course, we're gonna dye it orange. So the sun's setting and I think I'm just gonna camp here for the night. We don't really have a spot for our base picked out yet, so we might as well just hang out and enjoy the nice sunset. It's a fresh new day and I'm really excited to get going with building up a base for ourselves. The idea I had in mind was to make a cozy overgrown cottage, so I think building somewhere in this flower forest would be perfect for the theme of our build. Whoa. It looks like our sunny day is turning into a rainy one. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I love the rain in Minecraft. So as I was saying before with the build, in order to make this, there's a lot of resources that we need which means we need to go exploring. But first, I'm gonna gather up a little bit more wood so I can make us a boat for travel. And I also need some sticks to make torches so we can light up this area to mark it as our general base. I always find that's really helpful, especially if we get lost in the night. All right, one boat and a bunch of torches. And since I plan on staying around this area, let's make a chest so we can put some of the items that we don't need in it. All right, I think we should be good with all this stuff, so let's head out on a bit of a rainy adventure, find a river, and see where it takes us. Oh wait, I forgot a bed. So let's just shear these really quickly, just in case. And now we can finally head out. So for this build, there's a couple of things that I need. It's gonna be a little bit more of an overgrown cottage core build, so I would ideally like to find some moss to make things look more overgrown, and also to make some mossy cobble as well. I also think azalea leaves perfectly fit the cottagecore vibe as well, so hopefully we can find some of those too. And lastly, the big thing that I need off of my list is spruce. Spruce is a great foundational block because it pairs so nicely with many other blocks, so we definitely need to find it. Ooh, there's some pumpkins right here, we should grab these. I really love using pumpkins as a decoration in my outdoor areas. They give such a nice pop of color. All right, it looks like I found my river, so I'm gonna pop the boat down and start exploring. Ooh, let's grab some of the sugar cane while we're here. It's always important to start growing that early on in the game. Also, I just realized that I'm out adventuring and I don't even have a sword yet, nor do I have any food. I figured that since we're close to the river, we could grab some fish to eat. All right, I managed to collect 18, so we should be good for a while. Let's get this cooked up so we have some food. All right, that took quite a while to cook up, but now we have more than enough food to keep us going on our adventure. It took so long that it's already nighttime. And it's perfect that we have all of this food because I am already very, very hungry. All right, the rain has stopped and let's continue on to see what we find. No spruce yet, but I have discovered this really beautiful dark forest. I think it would be worth stopping to grab some dark oak saplings in case we ever want to build with it. All right, let's start chopping down some trees and see if we can get some saplings to fall. Just four is all I need. Oh, there's one, two, three. Oh, four, perfect. And let's just chop the rest of this up because you know, you just can't leave these here. You can't leave a half cut tree. And there's some extra dark oak saplings on the ground right here, which is perfect because you never know when you might need them. All right, let's continue our quest for moss and spruce. Oh, I spoke to you soon. All right, we got our spruce. Nice. It doesn't look like this is an old growth taiga, which is kind of disappointing because those have giant piles of mossy cobble, but that's okay. I'll definitely take the spruce. All right, let's start tearing into these trees to get some spruce and saplings. We'll take as many as we can get. All right, so we got 20 saplings, and I think that's more than enough because that's five large taiga trees if we wanna plant them like that. I did see this stony shore right here, and look, I see some iron right over there. So I figured we could head over here next to grab some resources. I'm really happy with all of the resources we've found so far. All we really have left to find is some more iron and the moss. I just realized I still have these wooden tools in here, so I'm just gonna, there we go, goodbye. 
Thank you, you served me well. All right, let's start gathering up some of these resources. The sun is setting, so I think this is the perfect spot to rest up and smelt some iron overnight. So I think that's pretty much it for the iron on the shore, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab us a little bit more coal. Alright, I think that's a sign for me to make my iron pickaxe. Let's grab this, and let's make our first ever iron pick. And we have a little bit of iron left over, so I'm thinking maybe we should also make our shield. Since we're off exploring and things could get kind of dangerous. Anything can happen in survival and we gotta be prepared. Alright, I feel like we should grab our boat, break up this station, and see if there's anything else useful in this area. Whoa! We've got a little snowy mountain over there. Whoa, and a big cave. Ooh. I feel like we should go look at this cave first because I'm in desperate need of iron at the moment. Whoa, this is really cool. All right, I should get some torches ready as well, just in case. Let's try bridging across to see what we find. Oh, creeper alert. Easy now. Oops. Had to happen. This seems to be mostly a surface level cave, but maybe we'll get lucky and find a hidden entrance to something bigger. Let's try down here. Let's see if there's anything past this coal. Mmm, this is looking like a dead end. Yep, no luck here. What about if we go down here? Ow. Oh! It looks like there might be a big passage. Oh my gosh, is that Lush Cave? Yes, I think we found it. This was very, very lucky. I almost didn't bother with this opening. Oh yeah, that is definitely moss. This is very steep though. We need to be very careful. I should have gotten a water bucket as well. We did get our first pieces of moss though, so that's good. We're gonna need quite a bit more than that though. <gasps> there we go. Oh, I'm so happy that we found one of these. That's awesome. <laughs> I also find that lush caves are pretty full with iron as well, so we should be able to collect everything that we need here. So I think it's worth exploring this place for a little bit to gather up some resources. You can already see some over here as well. Plus this clay is also very useful because I usually use a lot of it to make like flower pots, terracotta, all of that stuff. So let's just take our time gathering whatever we need from here. Wow, this is awesome. All right, let's find a way down. I think I'm just gonna carefully dig myself a staircase going down. That way we can get back up easily too. Whoa, this is a huge iron deposit. Awesome. This is such a pretty lush cave, I love it. Lush caves are one of my favorite biomes in this game. Let's grab some of these glow berries so we can decorate with them later. They can add really nice natural light to areas around your base. Let's also grab some of this small drip leaf. I love putting these around paths and in ponds. It makes areas around your base look really lush. Oh, and we got some more iron over here. Ooh, there's two spore blossoms right above us. We should definitely grab those as well. I'm gonna have no space left in my inventory by the time I'm done. We might honestly have to end up coming back down here for some more moss and stuff like that, because I need quite a bit of it for my build. However, just having the location is more than enough for me. I'm so happy that we found this, so I'm okay if we have to make another trip here. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a deep dark down here, and that is a giant lava waterfall. That is absolutely wild, but um... That's not what I was expecting to see, and we are actively going to avoid that. I was thinking about going down further to maybe see if I had any luck with diamonds, but you know what? I think I'm good. I think for now I'm just gonna kind of hang out, grab some iron, some moss, and uh, that's, that's about it. Yeah, I think we're good. We got so much stuff that I need for this build. This is perfect. I'm so excited about this. I'm more than satisfied with what we have, and I don't want to test my luck any further, so let's just head on out, and honestly, let's probably just head on home.
So we are back at our base safe and sound with all of our goodies from our adventure. So let's start things off by getting that iron smelted so we can make some tools and armor. So I'm really in love with the area that we spawned in and I don't think I really want to move. It has pretty much everything we need around here. However, now we have the task of finding the perfect location for our house. So this area is pretty nice. I mean, we have like a really cute little lake down here. We've got a lot of flat land. We have this really nice cliffside edge over here. However, I'm not a big fan of the plains grass. I kind of like the richness of like the forest grass instead. So I was thinking of maybe picking a spot that's a little bit further into the flower forest, but still close enough that we could eventually do something with this cute little lake and plains area when we want to. So let's see what's over back in this direction on the other side of this hill. Honestly, it's not too far of a walk and we've already hit an ocean with a little beach area. This little beach is really cute as well. What if we go somewhere in between the beach and the plains biome? Somewhere around here. <laughs> Literally right where we spawned. I don't think I've ever done this in any Minecraft world that I've had before, but I kind of feel like I want to build where I spawned. If we clear out some of these trees, we have a really nice view of a mountain behind us. We're really close to the beach and the ocean. And then we're a really short walk back to the plains area with that really nice lake. It kind of feels like we've got everything that we need around us and it's perfect. I don't really see a reason to explore further beyond to find a different location to live in because I really like this area. So I think our next task would be to make all of our iron tools and gear. If we're cutting down all these trees and terraforming, I need some better tools. All right, I've got all the tools that I need, so now let's make some armor. So we've got all of our armor made, so let's suit up and get this on us for protection. Now, you may notice it doesn't look like I'm wearing the armor, but that's because I'm wearing the invisible armor mod because I really like my cottagecore outfit and I wanna be able to see it. All right, the sun is setting, so let's head on to bed and in the morning, we will bring everything over and begin terraforming our new area. So I actually stumbled across this really big flat patch of land pretty close to our spawn area. And I think this would be the perfect place to build. We've got a nice mountain behind us. We've got a ton of flowers. I think this is the spot. Plus it will be less terraforming for us in the end, which is really nice. There's nothing worse than having to terraform when you only have some iron tools on you. All right, now that we have everything moved over, let's start torching up this area a little bit, just in case we work late into the night and mobs start spawning. And let's start clearing out this area so we have a nice open space to build our house. And I love incorporating leaves into my build, so we might as well start shearing all of these as well. And let's trim back this grass a little bit to give ourselves more space for this build. Let's also patch up some of these awkward drop-offs and holes to flatten things off a bit more. There, I think this place cleaned up really nicely. I also love the backdrop of this hill and I think it's gonna look really nice behind the house. So I think the first thing that we need to do with this build is lay out a footprint to get an idea of how it will look in this space. The build is kind of gonna be like two sets of stacked houses that are connected together. So the first house is gonna be a five by nine rectangle. And then we're gonna connect that with a piece that's gonna be seven blocks long. And finally, the house that connects is going to be a bit longer than the first one and it's also gonna stick out by an extra block. All right, cool. Judging from this dirt outline, I think the placement is pretty much perfect. So now that I'm happy with where this build is gonna fall within this terrain, I think the next step is to begin building. Okay, wait, I got a little bit ahead of myself and realized there's a couple things I'm missing for this build. It'll be quick though, because it's only cobblestone, a bit of granite, and finally we need just a little bit more clay to make terracotta. Okay, now we should be good. All right, we're back home with all the materials we need, so let's get on with this build. So I slightly miscalculated on my footprint. Our beams need to go right here and here. And I always like to start my builds off by building up the beams of the structure first. And for these, I'm gonna be using barrels as a base with a mixture of oak wood and strip spruce. The next step is to fill in our walls. And I'm gonna be using a mix of stripped oak and oak planks. All right, the walls are up and now all we need to do is strip all of this oak. And there's the basic shape of our build so far. It doesn't look like much just yet, but it's really gonna come together once we put the roof on and add some details. And before I forget, let's plant some of these saplings so we have some spruce if we need more. So for these roofs that we're doing, we're just gonna go with a classic shape using stairs. However, instead of using upside down stairs to connect them, we're gonna use some slabs instead. Then let's just chuck some stairs on this piece and let's fill in the roof with some mossy cobblestone and moss. All right, and this is what it's looking like at the moment. 
I think the palette I chose fits the cottage core vibe perfectly. I love what we have so far for the structure, but I think giving it some height will make it look a little bit better. So I'm gonna add a small top floor to each part of this build. And the roof is just gonna be a classic shape made with stairs. And I'm gonna also fill them in with mossy cobble and moss. And I think those second floors really helped out with the shape. Now before we move on with the build, I think it's time for us to get a more stable food supply. As you can see, I'm getting pretty hungry and I don't really have a sustainable food source at the moment. So I think we should gather up some seeds to plant. Not only can we make ourselves some bread, but we can also begin breeding cows, which is a great food and leather supply. And let's just begin planting everything by this lake so it's properly watered. All right, these are gonna take a little bit of time to grow and I'm pretty hungry, so I think we're gonna have to get some of these cows for now. Sorry, buddies. All right, let's get some of this food cooked up and that'll definitely solve our hunger for the next while. So now that we're properly fed, let's finish off this build by collecting a little bit more clay so we can make our terracotta walls on the top floor. All right, let's make ourselves some more clay and get that burning. And the very last thing I need is a yellow flower so I can make some yellow dye for the walls. And I see some right over there. Don't mind if I take these. And now we can make ourselves some yellow dye and with that we can make our yellow terracotta. And finally, we can begin filling in these walls, which we're gonna do yellow terracotta for this structure, and we'll use some regular terracotta on the other one. All right, I would say that the main part of this build is done, and I really love how it's turned out so far. I really love how all the colors and textures in this build complement each other. The bones of this house are looking great, but it's definitely missing a lot of detail, and most importantly, an interior for me to live in. I'm starting to get a little bit sick of living outdoors, so I think we should start with that first. So we'll start by giving ourselves a nice fancy new floor. Next, let's get a proper ceiling on this thing to cover up the messy rooftop. There, that looks a lot more clean and we have tons of space to work with. So I think what I'm gonna do next is divide up this house into three spaces. And I'm gonna separate the spaces using some oak trap doors on this wall. And on the other wall, I'm gonna use some spruce beams. So now when we walk through here, we have three evenly separated spaces for different rooms. Actually, let me get rid of these trap doors and try putting beams there instead. There, I think that looks a little bit more clean and uniform. So I think I'm gonna start decorating by making a little kitchen workspace in the first room. We don't have a ton of space to work with in this section, so it'll mostly just be a spot to craft and put stuff in a furnace. The next room has this big open wall that's perfect for storage, so let's place a bunch of barrels and chests down here. And I think the opposite wall would be the perfect spot for another workstation with some storage. Now we don't have all of our items for this workspace just yet, but I think it's looking really good so far and it's gonna be really easy to add to once we finally get those pieces. The final spot in our house is gonna be the bedroom. I wanna create a cozy little nook for my bed with some extra storage around it. Let's actually move this bed back one block and we'll pop a sign on the front of it as well as these barrels. Next, let's add a cute little reading spot to the front of the build where the window is. And we'll throw a planter behind that as well. And the last thing I did was add a cozy fireplace to the room. I'm really bad at building these and it took me a while to figure out the shape, but I think I got there in the end. All right, and this is the interior of our build. We are missing a few key items that I love to add to my spaces, such as lanterns, paintings, and carpets. But once we get the material we need for those, the interior is gonna look even better. But for now, I really like what we have. Now that we finally have a proper spot to rest in, I think it's time that we kick back for the night so we are well rested to do some work on our exterior in the morning. After finally having a proper night's sleep in a cozy room next to a warm fire, I think I'm ready to finish this build up. The exterior is kind of in need of some serious love right now. So let's begin by adding some decorative details. This spot on top of the door is looking a little bit too long, so let's pop in a window here. I think that's much better. Next, let's put up an awning above the door to give this wall a little bit more shape. Now for the windows, I'm gonna pop out the top parts and replace them with upside down oak stairs just to give a little bit more shape above the window. And I think these campfires are gonna cover up that shape a bit anyway. That's okay. I wanna use white stained glass windows because I really feel like they fit the cottage core vibe. So let's grab some of this lily of the valley so we can make some white dye. And let's just craft that up really quickly. And let's just pop these into the windows. And to finish off the windows, we'll add some shutters. And for the top floor windows, we're gonna do the same except for the shutters, we're gonna use oak trap doors instead of gates. 
To give this build a little bit more shape and texture, I'm going to add signs to the tops of the beams here. Just these few details alone have really added a lot of character and shape, but we're not done yet. I really want to add some azalea leaves to the build because I think the colors of the leaves and the flowers on them would really complement the build so well. Now my only problem is that I don't have enough bone meal to grow an azalea tree to get leaves. So I think that means I need to be brave and head into the cave nearby so I can find some skeletons and get some bones. I definitely don't have enough iron to make an efficient bone meal machine just yet, so I think this is currently our best option. Plus, it's just a little cave. What's the worst that could happen? Ow. I saw a skelly over here a second ago, but he must be hiding because he's so afraid of me. Oh, there you are. Uh-oh, there's a lot of zombies here. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Yeah, this is a problem. And I forgot food, so I am in fact resorting to eating zombie meat. Don't judge me. All right, let's see if I can bring the skeleton over here away from the other mobs. Oh geez. Oh no. I probably should have come a little bit more prepared. Ow. Yep, that hurts. Ooh, I'm kind of low health and this food isn't helping, so I think I just need to take them out and go. We only got one bone out of that? Or is that the one that was already in my inventory? <laughs> oh no. Well, that didn't go too well. So maybe it's time for plan B. Killing salmon for bone meal and food. Which, yeah, that didn't really work either. But at least I got some food out of it because I was getting pretty hungry. All right, option three it is then. Slowly bone mealing seeds and flowers. Which gave me a total of uh three bone meal. So thankfully I had that bone in my inventory. And I'm really hoping this is enough for us to grow this tree. Whew, amazing. And with this four leftover bone meal, let's decorate this area with a bit of moss. And finally, we can grab all of these leaves that we need. All right, let's finish up the rest of this build. So let's start by adding azalea leaves on the mossy spots of the roof. I sometimes like to replace some of the pieces of roof with leaves because that way they're a little bit more integrated into the build rather than resting too high above it. And now let's add some shrubs around the side of the house and I think that should be good for the leaves. It was kind of a big trek to get them, but I think it was worth it because they honestly add such a nice texture to the build and the colors of the leaves complement everything so well. Next, let's add some flowers around the windows. I'm gonna go with some lilacs and lily of the valley. I think lilacs complement the color of the flowering azalea leaves perfectly. Now I managed to find some iron while I was going through that cave, so I'm gonna make a bucket. And I'm just gonna run and grab some water really quickly because I feel like having some wheat on the outside of the house would complement the yellow terracotta really nicely. Let's grab some more seeds while we're at it. And let's throw a patch of water down right here. Now let's till some of this land and get some seeds planted. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place one more patch of water here. And I'm gonna replace this with dirt again because I really like having tilled soil underneath flowers. It makes it look a little bit more like a garden bed. And then finally, we're gonna close these two bits off with some sparse bits of fencing. There, this is really starting to come together. Now the front of this build is looking great, but the sides, not so much. One thing I like to add to my builds are lean-tos and little awnings. The best part is you can use these spaces for practically anything. This one, for example, I'm gonna use as a little bit of an outdoor workstation. And I'm also gonna make one on the other side of this build for an array of bulk storage. So we'll toss down some pumpkins, barrels, wood, and also some pieces of granite slab to look like rock piles. And I think that's looking really nice. The last thing I'm gonna do is add some pathing around this area. Now we don't have any other parts of this base to connect to yet, but it's still nice to have a path started. And I think our starter home is pretty much done. Well, as done as it can be because we are missing a couple of more resources in order to finish it, but that would require us going on some further adventures another time. Now you may have noticed that I did also add in a bunch of chimneys into this build. Chimneys always do such a great job of adding a lot of life, movement, and also sound to the builds. So I connected one to the furnaces at this workstation, and I also added two on top of the house as well. I'm really happy with how this build turned out. It's the perfect amount of space and honestly has everything we need for the start of this game. There are definitely some decorations and details that I would like to add going forward, but I guess that just means we're gonna have to go on some more adventures to find those materials. 
Now that we have a solid starter home to come back to, I'm feeling a lot more confident to explore this world further. So I think that's going to be it for today's episode. Thank you so much everybody for watching and I really hope you enjoyed this more chilled laid back style of video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you would like to see me do next. We had the start of a big new adventure today, so for now I think I'm going to go relax in my new home and get some rest. I'll see you all in the next one.